just came uh, boasted an over 11% rise in annual revenue, but this did not filter down to the bottom line. Headline earnings per share pulled back by 1.6%. Earlier, I caught up with the company's CEO, Roy Murray, for a closer assessment of the overall health of the business. I kicked off the conversation asking him to characterize the performance as we saw the disappearance of growth from revenue to headline earnings per share. Let's take a look. So uh, I think the, the performance was reflective of two very different halves. Um, before I go into each of the halves, mm -hmm. we had a, a property gain in the base, which was um, un unrealized, so not replicable. I think you have to strip out that once off. So if you strip out that once off, uh, earnings per share grew 4%. Okay. As I said, we had two distinctly different halves, uh, under pressure in the first half. Um, and in the second half, we grew P PBT by 22%, which was a, a very pleasing result for us. I think very, very much focused on cost containment in the second half to create positive operating leverage. So that's created good momentum for the beginning of this financial year, now FY25, and, uh, and for, for future growth of the brand and the profitability associated with the brand. Well, let's actually zoom into that strong second half because there you uh, posted record operating profit. And of course, you cite the cost efficiencies that you have implemented, particularly on managing staff costs. Um, can you maintain that? So we have maintained that. I think what we what we did very well in the second half of the year is just ensure the consistency of a staffing framework into the different types of stores. And by type of stores, I mean different models, so it's small and uh, or larger and smaller stores, and ensure the consistency across the deployment of staff in those spaces. So we were overstaffed in some of those stores. We were able to unlock some of those individuals and obviously put them into our new space, which we continue to deploy. I think, as you would have seen from the presentation or as we've spoken about previously, the amount of retail space that we will roll out over the next three years, you know, almost <clears throat> almost 140,000 square meters. It requires investment in people. So we are able to utilize current resources and drop them into new space, which was the, the driver of the cost containment. Ah, all right. Well, let's talk about your margins because I did notice that there was a narrowing in your retail margin. Uh, and of course, it seems that this was a trade-off between, uh, you know, your narrowing margins, um, but also your um, market share gains because you had to uh, engage in promotional activity. How comfortable are you with the position that you're in now with that uh, you trade off between the narrowing margins and market share gains, but also how much longer can you stay in that position? So it's, it's, a, it's a very good question. I, I think ultimately in South Africa, you have and you'll continue to have a very value conscious customer. Um, in, our, in our world, you know, pricing and obviously how pricing influences value is very important. Certainly value has been testament to what the brand represents. So in instances where promotional pricing increases or the penetration of promotions across general retail trade increases, we have to match. Um, as we think about that longer term, I think you need to augment that margin. So you would have seen historically and certainly into this financial year, we've, re we've reimagined the group going forward. We've thought about the over-indexed type of margins that come from financial services type products because ultimately you want the participation of the customer across everything that you deliver under a brand. Uh, so we very much see the lifetime value opportunity of a customer, not only in the retail, not only in the pharmacy space, but potentially engaging with some of the financial service products that will carry our brand in the future. And that should de-risk the margin profile or the promotional activity that I think will continue. I think that's general into general South African retail it will continue. Ah, all right. Well, and let's talk about your capital expenditure priorities. What do those look like, but also including your expansion uh, pipeline in the short to medium term? Sure. So, I mean, from a capital deployment perspective, I think um, the investment in the brand and growth is always going to be priority one, um, whether that's into a retail space or whether that's into businesses associated with our ambitions of integrated health. And then beyond that, it will be to maintain the dividend policy that we have for a few years, which is 40% of headline earnings per share. Um, simply speaking, that's how we think about capital deployment. That's certainly how capital will be deployed over the short and medium term. Well, uh, you mentioned the businesses um, that are associated with your uh, healthcare integration model. And there's actually an announcement uh, that you made today, an investment into one spark insurance for uh, just nearly uh, 156 million. Paint a picture of the value that you predict uh, will inject into your bottom line. Sure. So, I mean, one, par one spark, um, the one spark business has got... Uh, 
uh, what we believe is innovative technology and software that allows us to play into what is a traditional life insurance market uh, predominantly. I mean, I think the, the way that we think about integrated health is, is, is important in terms of the financial services that we want to associate our brand with. Uh, when I think about a financial service product, it's got to make sense through a health lens. And I think whether it's medical insurance, whether it's gap cover, certainly whether it's life insurance, where we inherently manage the risk of an individual. So, for example, a chronic individual who traditionally would have paid a very high premium on a, on a, on a life policy, we understand the risk profile of that chronic individual because we're dispensing medication, we're seeing how adherent that person is to medication. We can, we can offer value into a life insurance product. Uh, so that, in, in, in one example, is potentially the value that sits in those kind of financial services businesses. We don't necessarily just want to compete in the traditional markets. We want to differentiate the product. We want to use our retail assets to create value for consumers going forward. Ah, all right. And just lastly, I think we have about uh, 20 uh, seconds. Uh, what can you expect in terms of your financial metrics in the next financial year? Because, of course, we have all these base effects of COVID-19 vaccines. Do you expect all of that to be completely worked out and get to a point of normalization in the next financial period? Absolutely. So, I mean, uh, hopefully no effect of COVID, certainly no effect of COVID this year, which mm -hmm. would be next year's base. Um, the property gain is also out, out, out our numbers, so hopefully a more normalized number and hopefully we deliver and continue to deliver positive leverage like we did in the second half of the year. That was Roy Moresi, CEO of Diskim.